But alas, here we are. They're talking about train wrecks, of course. Let's move into Missouri 24, Florida 23. Oof. It, this was not a yardage issue. This was, you know, Florida outgained them 360 to 286 total yards. Florida only had 93 rushing yards. I don't know what Missouri has done as far as their rushing defense is concerned, but the last two weeks against South Carolina and Florida, they have given up less than 100 yards to both of them, and it is kind of unbelievable. 2.4 yards per rush for Florida. Luckily, Emory Jones could throw it a little bit. Like, 20 out of 32, 261 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. I just, I I don't, that number cannot be right. I think these stats are so jacked up. How did it's Florida so score? Goofy. They got 23 points. How did they actually, all right, I'm looking at the drives, because I did not watch all of this game. Uh, I mean, why would you? Why would you, yeah. <laughs> all right, so field goal, field goal, touchdown, field goal, touchdown. But who scored the damn touchdowns? Three plays, 50 yards. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. This, so I'm looking at Is stat the internet broadcast. broken? What's happening here? I don't know. I just I have no idea. Which Larry Pilgrim jumped in and said, just woke up, go Utes. Yeah, he's our resident Utah fan. Absolutely nice. love it for you, Larry. Congratulations. I know you're excited. Now, hey, I had somebody ask okay. me. This is a little okay. off topic. I had somebody ask me last night in my Twitter DMs, is this the biggest win in Utah history? And I said, absolutely not. Like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, this is a big win, and it feels huge in the moment, but what about the Sugar Bowl win? What about the uh, the Fiesta Bowl win? What about, like, the conference championship? Alabama and the Sugar Bowl. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. This is not. Also, Kyle Willingham is peak, like, cool guys don't, don't look at explosions. He's like, yeah, dude, we should win the Pac-12 every year. This doesn't phase me. Um, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Uh, wait, can I ask you a question too? Cause we're looking at Florida scoring or whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to flip Missouri one score loss at Kentucky one score loss at Boston college. If Missouri is nine and three right now, I mean, what I, I have a very low opinion of what Eli has been doing there, but they're, they're like a couple of plays away from nine and three. Uh, the last couple of games, I mean, Against Vandy, South Carolina, Florida, they have just beaten teams that like feasibly they could have they could have lost to. Not like convincingly, but like they, they easily could have lost two of those games. Uh, you know, no, can't blame them for getting beat by Georgia. But I mean, I'm not ready to put Arkansas on upset alert, but I am saying like Missouri's playing pretty good ball here at yes. the end of the season. And if you look at their entire resume, they might not be as bad. I mean, the 62 points to Tennessee doesn't look as bad in retrospect. Tennessee can can, can sling the ball a little bit. I mean, I, I, Arkansas better not get not have a letdown after Alabama oh, yeah. because Missouri, I think, is a team who's shown they can they can get somebody who's down. Yes, they can absolutely get somebody that's down. So, uh, cheers to to Missouri. Which, by the way, the the stats would tell you obviously post game win expectancy. Florida was 76 percent here. They they had every opportunity to win this ball game. And there was nothing that stands out uh, as far as, you know, it, anything in this game. And they did have nine well, penalties for 80 yards. First and 10 at the Missouri 30 field goal. First yeah. and 10 at the Missouri, first and goal at the Missouri 2 field goal. First and, what's the other field goal? First and 10 at the Missouri 24 field goal. So uh, the, and then they scored. Here, here's the thing, though. So we're talking about scoring opportunities, right? Florida had seven yeah. inside the Missouri 40. They scored 16 points. That's only 2.29, right? Okay. That's not great. That's not- but Missouri only had five, and they scored 16 points as well. That's 3.2. So it's not like it, – it wasn't like Missouri dominated this football game, right? Obviously, no, with no, the overtime. For, you know. Florida gave this away. Like, Missouri played well enough to let to capitalize on Florida being done. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so can we, I mean, do we talk about Dan possibly like knowing what the market I, is like? I just, I, I refuse to believe that they are going to let him go without having some kind of a plan. This just, this seemed to happen so quickly, but also you got to figure out what your program is going to be, right? You can't just fire somebody, go hire somebody and then hope for the best. You got to, you got to actually plan this stuff out. I I don't think that they they get him to fire the offensive line coach and the de, uh, defense coordinator if they're going to let him go at the end of the season. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
unless that was just a true like desperation move to get some cover. I think their best case scenario kind of midway through the season was like Mullen takes an NFL job and all's well that ends well. Uh, But something that else that complicates this. So Miami looks like it's going to open. LSU is open. USC is open. Arizona state, something I forgot about Arizona state regarding a certain candidate who Florida would be interested in hiring. I think would be very interested in Florida. Arizona State has huge NCAA, NCAA hammer about the swing down. Like, yeah. I forgot about this totally this season. Everything I've been looking at a coaching search completely off of my mind. They're gonna they're gonna sacrifice Herm to try and get out of get out from that from that hammer. And and man, I think that ultimately th- there are so many good jobs open. Who are they gonna hire? That's that's the issue, right? It's who do you hire? Because it, yeah, you're Florida. You're a great job, all all that. But it just seems very chaotic in Gainesville. And, you know, I mean, if you're Billy Napier, uh, which I'll say the name, you don't have to. <laughs> if you're Billy Napier and you've got all these different options, right, which I, I think I personally think TCU is going to go after Sonny Dykes, which I don't know why you would. But either way, I thought that those I'm were. Not, I'm not breaking news. Napier is not going to TCU. Yeah, that's okay. Over. So that's yeah, okay. Dykes to TCU. Yeah, that's yeah. done. All right. So Napier still has uh, Virginia Tech and then there's Florida. That's an option. And then possibly Arizona State, if he wants to go deal with NCAA crap, right? I am just, I, and then it's a, Josh jumps in, God, I can't wait for LSU to finally announce who the man is. Uh, and Larry Pilgrim said, ASU got shoes issues. Yeah, it's, there, there's a lot going on at Arizona State. It's just, it's a train wreck. I, I don't know, like, if you're Florida, maybe you just play this out, see what happens next year, because I don't necessarily think it would be crazy to think that if you don't have Emory Jones, you might actually be a better football team. Like this is it, this is all I'm, yeah. I'm brainstorming right now, right? This is this is Nebraska with Adrian Martinez. Like, would you like to see this coach one more season with a different guy? Right. At sometimes, if you got the wrong guy, there's just nothing you can do. If you get a full season of Anthony Richardson, healthy, give him all the first team reps in the off season. What does he do? Now, if you have another bad season with another bad quarterback or whatever, then okay. But this this whole jumping the gun on some of these coaches is – there's a lot of programs that could be setting themselves back quite a bit. And this, this, well, and I think this into- is maybe uh, – so, so two wrinkles into that. One, Anthony Richardson removed uh, all Florida stuff from his Twitter bio last night, which is – Okay, Spicy I did not see that. I'm glad you paid attention to that. I did not see that. Somewhere, somewhere SEC Mike retweeted it. That's the only reason I saw it. The other thing here, I think that Dan Mullen is in like an, and maybe even Scott Frost is like in an anti-Matt Campbell situation at Iowa State. So like Campbell with Purdy is is kind of been limited by Purdy, but basically only succeeded because of Purdy. Yes. And so there is a I, ceiling. If you, if for, for every reason you have to think that like Florida might be better if they can figure out the quarterback position with someone else, you might think like Iowa State, Iowa State might be worse there. I, I think that you just don't want to get in a bidding war for Lane Kiffin if the Napier stuff doesn't work out. Like Lane Kiffin probably sent out twenty text message last night that was just like pay up nerds. Like I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not showing you my binder. You can pay me. If and if, so, I wonder what 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 Florida thinks they can do, especially with like. Washington open. I mean, they're just big, yeah. big jobs too. Washington and USC and LSU. I just don't know that you want to compete for those guys, knowing that like Mullen's a little crazy, but like Mullen has been successful in the past and George is a flying death machine right now. I just don't think you want to try and make a hire and end up with trying to talk yourself into Sean Clark being the future at Florida or something. Yeah. Uh, the Who was it? Pete Thamel, I think, said, and this was weeks ago, he said, I have to wonder if it wouldn't be a smart idea for both programs if Penn State and Florida were to uh, trade head coaches, like an NFL trade, take James Franklin down to Gainesville, take Dan Mullen up to Penn State. Uh, both fan bases, I think, would actually be happy with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm conflicted. Like, again, change of scenery is like an underrated aspect. Yes. Yes, very and, much and, so. And there's something to be said about like, uh, I mean, it's kind of like cleaning off your desk, right? And you just get to, you know, hey, it's like, man, I've been meaning to rearrange the way these lights and this camera are for weeks. And if I just cleaned everything off and started fresh, maybe I'd be able to set it up the same exact stuff, but I'd set it up in a little bit different way. I'd take care of some stuff that I had. Maybe that would work for Dan Mullen. I mean, the one thing about, 
there's just no rest in that for either team. I mean, I think the SEC East is a little bit easier than the Big Ten East. No, I don't think that. That's objectively true. And so, like, I know that, you know, Penn State is probably not psyched about having to play Michigan, Ohio State, and Michigan State every single year. Florida, you're basically, you know, if I can, if I can just not get embarrassed by Georgia, I should beat everyone else in this, in this program. So that's, yes. that's interesting to me. Yes. Maybe they hire Gus Malzahn to come back, come back around. Larry jumped in. So Ball Python Love, of course, said smack that like button for the hosts. Yes, we certainly appreciate that uh, for sure. And, and then Larry jumped in. I'm wondering if Slovis and Jaden Daniels entered the transfer portal. Mullen guys quit, I think. Haven't watched, so just speculating. They, they certainly don't seem to be giving 100%. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like that, considering we have seen them play really, really well, and now it is just a complete cluster. Like there's, I have no idea what to expect from this team at, at any point. So I could, I mean, maybe I could see Jaden Daniels leaving because he, it's not like he's played great. He's supposed to be uh, a superstar. <laughs> Jim Johnson, keep your hands off Gus Malzahn. <laughs> I don't think you got anything to worry about with Gus. I don't think Gus is leaving UCF right now. Yeah, I could I could see Slovis or Jaden Daniels in Gainesville. I don't know that Slovis brings anything to the table as far as uh, the SEC competition is concerned. But, you know, Jaden Daniels is intriguing. Uh, him with with Dan Mullen could be real, real interesting. Like, yeah, that, that would be would a lot you of fun. Rather, <laughs> would you rather... Spencer Rattler or Jaden Daniels? I take Jaden Daniels in a heartbeat. Interesting. In a heartbeat, like not even close. I think I think his ceiling is so much higher than Spencer Rattler's, so much higher. Like it's just unbelievable because I I think that Jaden Daniels can actually read a defense. Yeah, that's that's. that's I think that that might be true. And in the well, SEC, one thing I was like thinking you would about. That. Yeah. Uh, I think there's two things that are interesting to me. One, Bailey's app transferred up, right? Yes. So technically, could still transfer. I mean, this I, is I, it, you'd have to. I, this is his. Isn't this his last season? I guess. I guess I he would he still have a COVID more. season, right? Yeah, but so I think that's probably the logistics of that are too crazy. Then I was kind of wondering, like, is there is there anybody at the? Will we see somebody at like the FCS level come up and and take over? That's but that is nobody. Nobody's putting up the numbers that Zap was, but I yeah. wonder if there's not like a new, if there's not going to develop a new market for like, hey man, you've developed this guy for like three years. He's gotten reps. Let's bring him up from the farm team. Let's let him start at Florida for two years or whatever. Well, you know? but here's here's the situation with Western Kentucky. Remember they brought up the OC and like all of his receivers. He, yeah, he already yeah. had. You'd have to do that same thing over again. Gary Lewis jumped in on YouTube said twenty twenty or twenty one ASU OC Hill failed Daniels for one and a half seasons. And Jim John said, Spencer Rattler gives me Tate Martell vibes. Now, he ain't Tate Martell. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> Tate um, Martell's a different breed. Like, Spencer Rattler is not you, that. <laughs> do you know who's leading? Okay, because I went down a rabbit trail here to be like, hey, who's leading the FCS in passing yards? Maybe that's it. Do you know who's leading the FCS in passing yards? This is such a great name. I have no idea who's leading the FCS right now. <gasps> Cole Kelly. Cole Kelly. <laughs> Where does he play? At Southeastern Louisiana, Arkansas. Oh, he was at Arkansas two years ago. Phenomenal. The big dude. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, I could totally see that. That's so fun. Oh, my Southeast gosh, that's Southeast Louisiana. Awesome. Southeast Louisiana. So, it, I have on here Wisconsin 35, Nebraska 28. Nebraska does this <laughs> every time out. Started with Florida and got to Cole Kelly. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it, it happens. It happens. Uh, 21, Auburn and Florida. WTF from Gary Lewis. Like, yeah, Well, Auburn just... One, Bo Nix got hurt. Anders Carlson got hurt. Like, what, what, do you, what do you expect at this point? Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.